Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. So glad you're here. Well, what's going on with the stock market? Now, we've had a big run-up, right? Three weeks in a row, straight up. Okay, and now this past week, we've just gone sideways. We've really gone sideways for about five trading sessions. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You got the VIX. The VIX has come way down, sitting with a 12 handle, 12.69 or something. The VIX is going to spike off which is the volatility index, going to rise up, which will bring the stock market in. But they're going to push this market higher into the end of the year. They want to push it up. They want big bonuses. Wall Street's bonuses are determined by how high the stock market is. Now, we're going to get a little bit of a pullback, just my take. Maybe they can push it straight up The Moon Boys. Moon Boys think we're in a new bull market and we're going straight to the moon. But I do think we're going to get a pullback here coming up maybe starts today maybe tomorrow who knows but the 12 handle on the VIX makes me think that a pullback is coming before they push it up into the end of the year we got another month left in the year and we will get a Santa Claus rally and we'll probably close the year out on a record high but first we'll get a pullback just my take yours may be completely different all right so let's get over to the real estate market now People, they just don't, they, they don't like when I talk about the real estate market. It's funny, they moon boys, they get upset. Well, here's the problem with the real estate market. It's not really the real estate market itself. It's the fact that the Fed raised rates so quickly, right? I mean, we went from 0% to 5%. Five and a quarter. And we did that in a relatively short period of time, about 14 months. Normally, a move of 5% or more, that would take place over six years. Now, we haven't seen the pain from that yet. The pain is still coming. There's a lag effect. Okay. Now, we've got this rate up, rate up, rate up, rate up. Okay. Now, anyways, we stopped raising rates in September, right? Now, a lot of people think they're done. We may keep going. I'm not really sure. But okay, let's say we're done. When does the recession hit? The recession typically hits about eight months after they stop raising rates. About eight months after they stop raising rates. They stopped raising in September, October, November, December. Five months into next year, you're looking out about May or June for the recession to hit. And it's going to be a vicious recession. A lot of people don't think so. I think it could even follow through into a depression, which would lead us into 2025. But that's just my take. You're taking maybe that there's no recession going to be a soft landing every time they start talking about that soft landing you start hearing that word soft landing soft landing soft landing that just means the recession's following that's my take okay all right now i wish i wish that people could see my inbox i'm a real estate broker and i get a lot of emails from other agents and i'm connected in a lot of networks out there but if they could just Take a look into my real estate boxes. Everything is price reduced right now. Price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. And I live in a very, uh, well, let's just call it homes are priced very high in my area. I mean, it's not uncommon to see homes sell two, three, four, even $5 million. That would be not uncommon. But we're now getting million dollar price reductions. Million dollar price reduction, price reduction. The luxury market's really getting destroyed out there. I mean, it's just getting, well, it's just, there's no buyers, right? The buyers have gone away. The demand is gone. So that's down 20, you see the price reduction, 25, 30%. But Mike, those are $5 million homes. Now that's true. That's true. But now if you keep looking at my inbox, right? Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. I get what I call desperation emails desperation emails from, well, like I say, I'm in a few networks where it's almost like an MLS for multiple listing service, but only for cash buyers because these people, they don't have time to go out and get a loan, time to go out and get financing, right? They don't have time for that. Now, why don't they have time for that? Well, they got into trouble, right? A lot of homeowners are in trouble because they're, well, their prices are going up on their property taxes, on their insurance, on their grocery bills. They're running out out of money. Homeowners are running out of money. They're trying to hold on. They want to hold on. And they, you know, it's embarrassing when you can't make your mortgage payment. It really is. I mean, I've been there. I've been bankrupt almost twice. Never gone bankrupt. Almost bankrupt. Had 
to borrow from people I didn't want to borrow from, but I had to do it, you see, because I was embarrassed. My big plan of being this real estate mogul was falling apart as the real estate market was collapsing on me. And that's going to happen again. A lot of people right now, they're embarrassed. They're underwater. They can't get money out of their property, but they can't afford their mortgage payment. So they're not making the payment. When you don't make the payment three, four, five months, the bank, they come and they take the property from you. You go into foreclosure. And when you're in foreclosure, then you've run out of time. A lot of these people, their bank, their house is going to go to the marketplace, right? It's going to go to auction. It's going to, they give them a week or two weeks, uh, but they waited too long. They waited too long. They should have contacted a realtor sooner and they could have put it on the market and they could have done the proper marketing and got the offers to come in and they could have saved some of their equity. But right now, let's just take a typical example of what I'm seeing. All right. So they bought this home for $400,000, $400,000. And they bought it, let's call it six years ago. All right. 400,000, six years ago. And it ran up, it ran up, it ran up. Anyway, 600, 650,000, right? 400,000 they bought, ran up to 650,000. Right now they're trying to get a cash offer at 420, 420. Okay. So they, but they only have a week. You have to pay all cash. You can't get a loan. So you have to pay all cash. You have to come, write the check, bring it to the top company. Here, you know, here's my cashier's check. You don't write them. You transfer the money, you wire it. It's got to be cash, right? So they can get out of the property before that bank dumps it onto the foreclosure market, before it goes to auction. So if you got $420,000, you can pick up this $650,000 house. Well, it came down to about $600,000 now, but $600,000 house for $420,000. But you got to bring all cash, no loans, got to be all cash, right? Okay. All right. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. They're going to find somebody. I mean, they thought about it. They're going to find somebody to go pick this property up with all cash. Okay. So they now got this property with all cash and they closed on the property. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. That neighborhood where all the homes are worth $650,000. The new comp is now four twenty. Did your house go down? Did your house go down? Well, most owners would say, hell no. Like I determined the price of my house. Well, no, the price of your house just went down because the new comp's 420. Even if you find someone to buy your house at 600,000, it's not going to appraise now because you got a comp in your neighborhood at 420. Now this is going on in a lot of areas around the country. You don't see this and media will never report on this. If you're in these networks, you'll get the offers. You'll get, you know, if you got a cash buyer, you can bring them in and they'll even give you a couple percent in commission if you're a real estate agent. But anyways, you need to have all cash. It's a network of people that have all cash, right? And these are desperate people and there's getting more and more of them. Just in my area the other day, there was one that they bought it for 800000 It ran up to about a million two. They're willing to let it go for 900000 So that whole neighborhood selling for $1.2 million. But now they just found a cash buyer at 900000 because they were desperate. They had to get out. They had to get out now. They couldn't wait. They ran out of time because their house was going to auction. So that neighborhood went from $1.2 million. The latest comp is 900000 You're not going to get an appraiser to come in and give you that $1.2 million appraisal. So unless you have someone paying all cash at $1.2 million, you're not going to be able to sell your house up there. You might be able to still get a million instead of $1.2, but you just lost 20% of equity because of the one, the one desperate seller that needed to get out, that took a cash offer, 30% off of market value. And there's a lot of this going on around the country right now because people are getting desperate. People are getting desperate. Look at the damage is done. The damage is already done. When they raised the rates up, I mean, the mortgage rates went from 3% up to about 8%. Yeah, they've come back down about seven and a half now, but they're not done going up. They'll hit 10% next year, but the damage has been done. You see the damage has been done to the banking system, to the credit side of things. There's two things that are going to hurt this market. There's two things that are going to bring the market down. One is employment. And when the recession hits, which will be out about May or June next year should be about the timing as long as they don't 
continue to raise rates. Maybe we can kick the can down the road by raising rates. But it happens typically about eight months after the last rate increase. So we're looking about eight months out. And when that recession hits, the job losses will come in. When you have a job loss, look at you're locked in at 2.8%. I get that. I get that. And that's a great rate. But when you have a job loss, it's hard to make that mortgage payment. When prices of everything is going up and you don't have income coming in, all of a sudden you become that desperate seller. You're embarrassed. It hurts. Financial pain is very painful. It's very real. I've gone through it many times. Look at when you cannot get out of your property, get the cash out. You try to hold on as long as you can, but eventually the bank comes and then they put your house in foreclosure and they're going to put it into auction. Now you keep thinking that something's going to get better, that something's going to turn around, that someone's going to come and help you. They're not going to come and help you. Look at if you're in trouble, you're going to have to get out with your equity now. If you could get out close to the price Billy Bob got out, you're doing really well. But if you're one of the desperate sellers that waits too long, needs an all cash offer, I'll see your house come across the network and it'll be reduced. Now a lot of these houses, they need they need fixing up, they need sprucing up. The person doesn't have any money. He's out of money. He doesn't have money to paint it. He doesn't have money to put in new carpeting. He doesn't have money. So yeah, you're going to have to do some cosmetic work on these houses, but they're about 30% off, 30% off of market value right now. And that person will make it out. Now the next person, it'll be down close to that. He won't get out at the top. You get one desperate seller in your neighborhood, he can bring your whole neighborhood down. A lot of people don't understand that. Real estate is sold on the margin. The last sale is the most recent comp and holds the highest weighting with the appraisals. The appraiser will not appraise somebody's loan at $1.2 million when one just sold for $900,000 30 days ago. You won't get the appraiser to bring it up to that. He might bring it up to a million, but you're going to get to have to lower the price to a million or you're going to have to find someone to give you all cash at $1.2 million. But the thing is, the cash buyers, they're smart. The people that are sitting on cash are smart people. They're not buying at retail. They'll buy at 30% off and maybe they flip that house. Maybe they spruce it up a little and put it back on the market. And maybe that comp rises up. Maybe they put it on, bought it at $900,000. Maybe they put in carpets. Maybe they paint it, put it on at a million, make a 80000 or so. They make their 80000 and you got your new comp. You're back at a million now. But you're not at 1.2 anymore. That's my point. The point is real estate sold on the margin. Most owners go, I decide what my house sells for. No, you really don't. Well, uh, and a lot of a, a lot of sellers, they tell me, but Mike, you're my agent. You get me 1.2. Look at, I'm the agent. I don't have one, anything to do with what the price of the property sells for. It's the buyer and the seller. They're the ones contracting. The agent is the middleman that puts it together. Yes, but I cannot raise the value of your property. When you get that desperate seller in your neighborhood and that desperate seller is coming because the damage has already been done. The Fed has already done the damage by raising rates 5% in 14 months. That's a lot of rate increases, right? Okay, so they did the damage. But Mike, the Fed's going to pivot and they're going to lower rates back to zero. What's that going to do to inflation? We're going to maybe still hyperinflate. It's a possibility. There's a lot of problems out there right now. But the first problem is employment, right? Job losses. Job losses when the recession hits, they're already doing layoffs everywhere, especially my area. I mean, people out there looking for work can't find a job that pays enough to live indoors, so they work two jobs, three jobs, just so they can live indoors and make their rent payment, make their food payment. Look, at they lost one job, they're replacing it with three jobs. It's terrible right now. And these... Look, at a lot of people get upset, and I don't want to see this happen, but I really think the unemployment numbers are going to reach 10%. They're telling us that they, what were they, 3.4, and now we're at 3.9. We jumped to half a percent. By definition, we're already in a recession, but they won't know that for till well till May or June they'll finally figure it out and then the mainstream media will start to report hey we might be in a recession yes we might be but the thing is unemployment is going to skyrocket I'm looking I'm talking 10 percent the other problem is the credit crunch look at people aren't going to be able to get loans even if they want to because the banks don't have any money to loan out credit is tightening up at a rate like you 
You wouldn't believe the reason because of all the delinquencies. They don't have money. The money's not coming back in. They got to chase these people that aren't paying their credit card. These people that aren't paying their car payment. These people that aren't paying their student loans. These people that aren't paying their mortgages. There's no money coming in. All the money's loaned out. So credit's starting to tighten, starting to tighten up. They don't have money to lend. So you're going to need to find a cash buyer for your house. And you can do that. You can find a cash buyer for your house, but it's going to be about 30% off of market value. That's what cash buyers pay. That's what they're paying right now. And you get that one desperate person in your neighborhood, you're going to bring down the comps, going to change the landscape of the real estate market. This is happening right now. You're not going to see this mainstream media. They're not going to report on it. You heard it here from Tall Mike, though. If you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. Why not, everybody? Punch the subscribe button. Get out there. Have a great day. I hope to talk to you real soon now. Bye-bye.